Hi everybody, it's Dara and I am in Connecticut. I was just in Boston. I flew to Florida, got Jada, her dad. We all came, went to Boston. To, we're checking out colleges. We're on a college tour for my daughter Jada. And so I'm on the East Coast. It was cold in Boston and now I'm in Connecticut. It's a whirlwind tour. I'd like to do a tour where I can meet all of our family members who live in this part of the world. But in the meantime, I wanna say that this is so good to be back. It feels like home, the East Coast. The West Coast is my home, the East Coast is my home, but this is just really and truly magnificent and I wanted to share it with you. And I wanted to talk about the fact that the series that I did with Jenna, I just love. And um, we're in a place called Saybrook, Connecticut. And so, somebody just posted on Instagram, Endless Gray, uh, at Endless Gray, and she said that, that the letting go video really touched her because it's so true. We talk about letting go of toxins in our body, right? Welcoming in nutrients. We gotta cleanse the colon, eat fiber, so then we can begin to absorb all the nutrients and superfoods and tonic herbs. And then we've talked many times about decluttering the home so we can let go of old things to welcome in new things. And the things, there's the heart. Look at that. Um, so letting in the new things, <laughs> letting in the new things is about um, things, things, things are not just things, right? They're so hard to let go of because they represent feelings, they represent belief systems, they represent people, our things represent um, people. So letting go of the things themselves, it makes it, it, makes it um, harder because they're attached to ideas, uh, belief systems that we won't be able to afford it again. Somebody gave it to me. If I give it away, I won't remember my loved one. I've had it so long, I invested much in it, whatever it is. So, like I spend so much money on it, I feel bad getting rid of it. There's so many reasons why we hold on to things, but what I found is that so it's always psychological. And so when we do all of this letting go, and I want us to do it with the idea that we are welcoming in, we're not just letting go, we create a vacuum, we create space, and then we also start taking a look, or at the same time, at some point in time, we start taking a look at the people that we thought we're okay to commune with all the time and we realize maybe they're not anymore that it's not the best fit it's not the best use of our energy or it is taking up space that could be taken up by somebody else so we have to be willing to let go and that is so not easy I am here to tell you that I think that the people letting go of people and connections and energy with them is probably the trickiest of all um, there's cords that tangle there's ties that bind and so my mom used to say snip snip meaning she'd go snip snip meaning it's time to let go it's time to cut the cord and so only you know when it's time to cut the cord and even when you think it's time to cut the cord sometimes the cord doesn't want to be cut sometimes there's more lessons to be learned sometimes it's not that easy because somebody else is holding on so being mindful about your energetic connections with people is the best thing being mindful about what you put in your mouth what you take into your home and who you're communing with. And when you finally do what I call heavy lifting, because parting with people is nothing short of heavy lifting. Their bodies, their breathing, their, their energies, their entities. We have soul contracts, we have karma. And it doesn't mean we don't have to love them. It means we can love them. We can love them from afar. We can love them from a different form in a different place. Um, it doesn't mean the love has to go away or we have to behave in any way that's less than lovely. So, when you notice that you've done the heavy lifting and it is hard we have to say things that are hard we have to do things that are hard and when we do it we are left with a uh-oh what have i done i'm alone or uh-oh who am i going to text who am i going to call who's going to go with me here on weekends or whatever it is that we're so accustomed to we create a blank space and in doing that we create room for somebody else and something else so um 
I want to say it's not easy. That's not the easiest thing of all. That's probably the hardest. And when you get to the other side of the letting go of the toxins, the body feels lighter. The home feels lighter when we let go of belongings that don't serve anymore. And when we let go of people that do not serve us anymore, we feel a freedom that is almost indescribable. So that's what I want to say is that it's for something. It's not for nothing. We do it because we have faith, we can do it because we have faith, and then we welcome in sparkly opportunities and, and people and, uh, and, and things like, it creates this open, this open kind of feeling that it makes us aware of other beings around us and we're not busy going, oh, I can't believe they did this, or oh, look at the swans, see, two swans, how beautiful. We're not so busy involved in the battle of it or the annoyance of whatever we're feeling or justifying why we're staying or trying to reason why we're leaving. All of that takes up too much energy. So walk away, create the space, and it gets freed for something else. I just wanted to say that from Saybrook, Connecticut. I love you guys, and I'm gonna see you really soon. Get your greens on, get your letting go on. Welcome in, let in opportunities.